Hey guys, I'm Stephanie and this is Steph Stowe and today we're making homemade sauerkraut. We're taking this beauty right here, this big old head of fresh green cabbage and we are gonna slice it up and turn it into some wonderful tasty sauerkraut. So let's get this big beautiful head of cabbage sliced up and let's get going making our sauerkraut. Here we go. All right, to get this started, I went ahead and I've washed and I've just allowed my cabbage to be um, sitting on some paper towels for a few minutes to let the excess water drain out. And this particular is a obviously a green cabbage here and I purchased an organic cabbage, which is good to be sure that you don't get any extra pesticides or anything on it. It is just the true cabbage. Now mine is um, four pounds when it was weighed out. So I'm going to actually, for this recipe, use half of it. So I'm going to come in with a large knife and there's not really an easy way. Just go in and I'm going to cut it down the middle. It is firm, which is what we want. And the rest of it, I'm going to say, because this will make plenty for me. Oh, listen to that nice crunch. Doesn't that sound good? Isn't that pretty right there? All right, so this one, this half, I'm gonna to set to the side. And this half here, as I cut it, um, I didn't get a whole lot of the root because I kind of cut a little off side. But if you're cutting this half, you wanna be sure to cut this root out. I'm gonna save that section for now. And these larger outer leaves, I'm just gonna pull off. I should have one or two. And you see that these will have a really thick, thick stalk on them. So I'm not going to discard these. I'm actually going to just put these to the side because I'm to, going to use them. Now, we want to cut this up. Obviously, if you think of sauerkraut, it's very thinly sliced. So you can just take your knife and you can cut the pieces very thinly by hand. Take your time to do this. It's just fine. You want some really thin slices or you can use a mandolin here. And so that's what I'm gonna use for this. Cut it down further into what I would call manageable pieces. And even if you're slicing this by hand, it's much easier to do it in more, like I said, manageable pieces. Now I'm gonna put it here in my slicer. And if you're using a slicer, I've got the blade here. This particular one is set on a quarter inch slice of a thickness. You want at least a quarter inch or smaller. All right, so actually I'm just gonna do this by hand. And I'm going to push this through and just continue to work it and slice this very thin. To get my slices really, really small. Be very careful if you're using something like this because these blades are extremely, extremely sharp. That's why a lot of people use the little guard there. And you'll see, they'll come out very small like that. So I'm gonna continue slicing this up. As soon as I get sliced, I'll be right back. All right, I just finished slicing up most of the head of cabbage. And I've already had to empty it once. So you can see this is the first batch that I emptied. And in my container, I'm going to go ahead and get all of this off because you'll get to a point where you just can't get any more out. And I like this little shredder just because it gets it very much like um, you'd be making coleslaw. It's very thin, which I think is important. So I'll move that to the side just a minute. And I'm gonna move my block over here. Throw that away. And I'm gonna kind of look at it because you can see there's some pieces that are just not real small in here, but they don't all have to be tiny, but I do wanna get them all similar sizes. So I'm gonna kind of go through, see some of these little bigger pieces. I'm just gonna pull these back out of my cutting board and I'm just gonna kind of lightly chop them because I do want everything a similar size. And again, you could have cut the whole cabbage um, by hand with a knife. Just go slowly because you're going to have to be very precise with the cuts. And don't cut yourself. That's going to be important too. Because you don't want to injure yourself during the process. Okay, 
I'll get this over here. Now we've got our cabbage in here cut up. Wipe my hands off a little bit. And to this, we're gonna need to add some salt. Now, when you're adding this, let me preface and say this. I'm gonna be using kosher salt. You can use kosher salt, sea salt. Do not use table salt. Table salt has additives to it and you want something very pure. Remember we had organic cabbage here, so we want no extra added to our salt either. This is about two pounds, give or take just a little bit because my cabbage was about four pounds. I chopped about half of it. Just rough estimate, it is about two pounds. Um, and generally you want to do about a teaspoon and a half per pound. So with that being said, I'm gonna use, since this is two, I'm gonna use a tablespoon. That'll be three teaspoons, tablespoon. And I'm gonna kinda need just a hair more. I didn't quite have it measured all the way. All right, and just kinda roughly place that all over your cabbage. Now, the next thing that you want to do, you need this in a larger container. You're gonna kinda come in with by hand and you're gonna kinda start mashing because the cabbage naturally has lots of liquid. So if I'm mashing this, you'll see it'll start getting a little smaller because I'm actually bruising it. And I'm causing it to, you can see my hand is already super wet. The salt is causing it to sweat and release its liquid. So I'm just mashing it down, kind of helping that process for the salt to get into the shredded cabbage. I don't know if you can tell, but it's glistening a lot because there's a lot of moisture content. Put hands in here, kind of rub them together. You can see <laughs> lots of water. already coming out of it. So it doesn't take a lot as you're mashing to get that water. And that's what we want. We want a lot of that water. That's why it's so much better, in my opinion, to get it cut very small. You can break down those little molecules. And again, I'm doing this one batch at a time because I'm the person that eats this at my household. My husband doesn't really care for it, but I like it on like sausage dogs. It's getting warmer springtime. We like to grill sausage a lot. Have a nice sausage dog, sauerkraut on top of it. Mm, delicious. I love Reuben sandwiches. Love it. Have it as a side to some roast. Really good. Break down that fatty meat. And that's what's that's what the beauty of fermented foods do. They help other meals that we have that are heavy. We help our body break them down. Look at all this water I'm getting out. We want all of this. Now I've done a good job of breaking it down so far. So what we're going to do at this point is let this sit. I'm gonna get all this extra as much as I can off my fingers, and I'm gonna let this kind of set and go ahead and continue to break down for about, mm, I, I'm gonna give it about 10 minutes to let it sit like this and go ahead and start breaking down some more. Then we're gonna massage it a little bit and then get ready to put it in our jar. All right, it's been about 10 minutes. So I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna take this, this is actually a little tart maker, but I like the size of it. And I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna mash. You can do this again with your hand, but I'm just putting some extra force on some of these that I see are a little fuller. You can even do it through the process. Look at that liquid that we have there. Just what we want. So, i mash these. It's a little bit of a crunch. Mash that up again. All right, get that set aside. And now I'm gonna come in and I've got, this is just a quart size jar. I've got my little funnel here. So I can, personally, it's a little easier for me to do with the funnel, that way it doesn't get quite as messy. And I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna grab this cabbage and I'm gonna put it down in the jar. It's a little easy peasy here. 
You don't have to worry about straining it because all that liquid is going in with it. All that liquid in there. Get every bit of this. And you can see if we've cut it up and we've cooked it down, and you know, if you're familiar, if you cook cabbage on a regular basis, you know a large head of cabbage will cook down to almost nothing, it seems like. So that is, it's nice and liquidy. If you can tell we've got a lot of liquid in there. Nice and liquidy. And I like using a larger jar for this because you could say, oh, you need to use a smaller one but I want to accommodate all that liquid that's gonna come up. Now, we do need to kind of weight this down. So to net, weight it down naturally, I'm gonna use this big leaf here. Oh, I've got this larger thing, larger edge, and I'm gonna kind of cut it down. And I'm gonna kind of shimmy this in a, my container. And I want to push this down. Push it with my hand. And it'll also kind of preserve it. And as you can see, as I'm pushing with my hand here, the liquid is on top. And that's what I want. I want all the cabbage under the liquid. Nice. Okay. So now I've got a clean paper towel here. A little slightly damp. I'm going to come in. Even though I used to funnel, I'm going to wipe the top off really well. Put the lid on it. Close it up. And this is going to set. Now, we are not processing this. This is not going to be on the shelf. What we're going to do is we're going to set this in the kitchen, and it's going to stay in here. Um, I'm going to start testing it about five days. Um, usually about four or five day range is my personal preference for the sauerkraut. It can continue to go um, a week or two. But what you do want to do each time is come in every day and open this lid and let the gases and the air out because if not, it will kind of burst on you because all that fermentation is going to start bubbling up. You'll start seeing some bubbles through um, probably in another day or so, depending on how humid or how warm it is in your areas. Pretty warm here in South Georgia, so it doesn't take nearly as long. And it'll start bubbling. You'll see some color change. After about day five, you want to start testing it. So. Got our sauerkraut, gonna put it in a dark place and it'll be ready for us in no time. I'm Stephanie and this has been Steph's Day for today. We're making sauerkraut and we went ahead and made this and just like earlier, we pressed it down. We've got our nice liquid in here. So each day we're gonna open our jar, just completely open it, let any of the extra gases out. In about five to seven days, it should be perfect. Now some of you, it may be perfect at four. There's no right or wrong answer here. But what you wanna do, open it, and when you get to about, let's say the four day mark, using a clean utensil each time, pull out just a little bit, taste it. If it tastes good to you, stop. Once it tastes good, put it in the refrigerator. That will kind of stop or slow down the fermentation process, and it'll be good in there for several months or until you eat it all. Um, but you can let it go up to about eight or 10 days, but it will be pretty bitter. So just kind of taste it along the way. It's a fun, easy way to do. Super, super simple. Just two ingredients, salt and cabbage for some wonderful homemade sauerkraut. You can experiment with adding things that you like. You can experiment with adding a little bit of carrot to make it a little sweet. Some cranberries. A um, little bit of maybe orange if you wanted to. You can alternate some green and a little bit of purple cabbage for a really pretty look. The choices are up to you, which you can add to it. Make it your own and enjoy it. So remember, I'm Stephanie. This has been Steph's Day. Give us a thumbs up. Click that subscribe button for more great content like this. And remember, Steph's Day for making memories one dish at a time. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great night.